a YouTube Repo Man 64 back again. I found another detail that points to uh, April 20th. Um, I showed you before that, and I'll show you again here in a minute um, about the. Uh, in Luke, they're talk uh, Jesus is talking about having a meal, serving a meal. But then he says, and if I also come back and find them watching in the second watch and in the third watch, which leaves two watches open as to when the bride leaves, it's either the first watch or it's the fourth watch and still researching that. Um, but I found something else and I want to bring it to your attention. Now remember, and I want to point this out, I want to make it real clear. Let me turn this up because it gets bad sounding if you are tithing money and and i'm going to guess that most of the people watching this there's a few i'm sure that aren't but most of the people that are watching this are a part of the bride a part of the uh the rapture elect that leaves previous to the tribulation we are in heaven to watch the very first seal being opened how long it takes for those first six seals to be opened there's a lot of debate i've had some good uh, comments uh, could be six days, could be 30 days, and there was another one that says a whole year uh, later. Uh, so I don't know exactly how long it takes those six seals to be open. I don't think it's three and a half years. I don't think the two witnesses um, are here for the uh, sleepy church. The ten virgins all fell asleep. Half of them had oil, half didn't. The half that had oil are the sleepy church they fell asleep and half that don't are the jews and i believe that the two witnesses are here for the jews but this weighed on my heart to say to everybody if you are tithing money um fasting being kind not cursing obeying the ten commandments doing everything you can do to be right and you have this feeling that every time you do something wrong that you've lost something that is not the attitude of the bride just like brab is up there on top with jesus remember they were both up there on the balcony um pontius pilate was not down amongst the people he was up on his balcony with Jesus and with Barabbas. And they chose to crucify Jesus, and Barabbas was set free. He is the bride. He doesn't deserve it. He didn't do anything. As a matter of fact, there's not rec one recorded word about him whatsoever. Too often I see a comment being made, well, I don't know if I'm good enough. It's not about you. I'll say this a thousand times. It has zero to do with you. It is the praise that Jesus will receive when we get to heaven based on his covering of our sin. All of your sins, past, present, and future. If you think you've lost something, you are attempting, and there's a huge warning in the Bible about this, when um, Moses struck the rock twice, he struck the rock twice. He was not allowed to go over into the promised land. Now, God loved him. God buried him. And his bones were hidden from Satan. And even Satan had a huge uh, railing accusation. And I think that railing accusation is, wait a second, because he does not understand salvation at all. He says, wait a second, I want the bones of Moses. He didn't go over, so that means he's mine. And God says, no, he's not yours. He is mine. And Satan, of course, did not understand, as we should understand that the saints that are left behind after the rapture are very, and I want to express this and emphasize this to you, very important. They are your children, your mother, your father, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles. They are your best friends. They are everyone that you have warned that will not listen. They are falling asleep. They are asleep. There are several groups. There are 
there is a vast multitude of people on the planet that don't think that any of this is real. They have zero faith in it, but they're about to. They're about to be woke up. There's a vast, even a greater amount of people who work. They go to church. They tithe. They do all these wonderful things. And they will tell you, and, 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 and I think it was, I forget how many, 400, 300 years ago, the Catholic Church was actually selling a certificate. You could pay money. You could pay money. And once you had this certificate in your hand, it was your guarantee to get into heaven. This is the works-based gospel that Satan has always pushed. Don't you want to be like God? Don't you want to save yourself? Don't you want to build a tower to Babel? Don't you want to be perfect every day? Do the right thing. Satan wants you to obey the Ten Commandments, not because you are saved, because he wants you to think that you are saved as a result of that. Do not fall into that trap. Surrender everything. When I say, and, and I mean it, I, boy do I mean it, go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know and you don't need to tell anybody. This is a private, intimate relationship between you and your Father. Come to the foot of that cross. Bring nothing with you. Nothing. And by naked, I don't mean take your clothes off. I mean naked as far as don't bring anything. There is nothing you can offer. It was done when Jesus said it was finished on the cross. It was finished. That was the end of it. But, alas, because the group that's about to leave is so small by comparison to the group that appears at the sixth seal, these people could not let go. However, after the rapture and they see, when they see me go, just like Elijah said to Elisha, when you see me go, when you see me go, at that moment, I know that they are going just like Elisha did. They will drop to their knee. They'll be standing in church. They'll be standing in church. And a small percentage of the people in the church will poof, disappear right in front of them. They'll be screaming and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And they'll be like, what happened? Where did they go? And they are going to know their pride, their pompous attitudes, their perfection that they tried to attain was all for nothing. Just like the rich man that came to Jesus. Jesus saw right through him. Jesus knew exactly what he was dealing with. He's God. He knows exactly what he's dealing with. No, you come and, and I'm talking to anybody who doesn't understand salvation. And that is it in a nutshell. You come to that foot of that cross. It is covered in blood. Jesus' feet are there at the bottom. Now, I know he's risen. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying mentally. Go there. Know that it was paid for. Hug the foot of that cross and let the blood of Christ wash over you. That is the only thing in this dispensation that will get you out of here to avoid all these things. All these things that are about to fall upon the earth. Okay, that being said, I want to clarify that. No works, and I mean none, nothing, and no, stop thinking that you've done something. Stop, when you're looking at Jesus, stop looking into the mirror. You don't see yourself. Remember when um, Jacob showed up in front of his father, he put a covering on, a covering that made his arms hairy. His father was blind. He could not see Jacob. He thought that he was blessing Esau. Esau is a picture of the Jew. God loves the Jews, but we are going to escape all these things. We will show up in heaven, and there will not be one moment while you show up in heaven where you'll be like, I mean, you're going to thank Jesus, obviously, but your sins will be forgotten. You will be covered by his glory. There will be no remembrance of your previous sins all you'll know is that you were bought and paid for you have been bought and paid for and it's one simple gift that you have to accept no it's not a chant or something and that 
is where the confusion comes in for people who think that if I just do something, you're doing something again. And that's the part where only, honestly, only the bride can hear it. Only the bride can understand it. Everyone else is trying to do something. There is nothing. You can go get baptized. You can do all these things. That's why the wheat and the tares, you can't tell them apart. But at the very end, the wheat will bow. The tear will not. The tear will stand up proud, uh, pridefully and straight up and uh, thinks that it's done something. The wheat knows that it uh, it did not do anything. And the wheat is the uh, obviously the uh, tribulation saint because the bride is the barley. So, that being said, and, and that's what's so hard. It literally is the hardest part of what any of us do. <clears throat> it is as simple as asking Jesus into your heart. It's that simple. There is no chant that you can make to make that happen. Know that John 6, nobody, and I mean, it says it right there, nobody comes to the Father lest the Father draw him. If you are being drawn, know that he is working in your heart. Surrender. Give up everything. I'm coming to the cross, but you know, I've I've been a I've been better than that person. I've been a pretty good person. Throw it all away. You haven't been a good person. I don't care how good you are. You haven't been a good person. You cannot build your tower of Babel and get to heaven on your own merit. There is nothing that you've done good enough. And isn't it kind of ironic? That the worst sinner who says, Jesus, I, I don't have a chance. I mean, the worst sinner that you can think of. Drug addict, murderer, thief, liar, a homosexual, um, trans, what do they call the people that change their, change uh, trans, not transgender, is it transgender? They, they change their clothes. Or you, the Bible specifically says not do that. All of these things, one Break one tittle of the law, and you're guilty of the entire law. So we can't look at a group. Well, I'm not a thief. I'm better than that guy because I don't steal. Yeah, but you lie. Well, lying's not as bad as you. You see what I'm saying? It is a web of deceit when you get involved in that. Let it all go. There is nothing, nothing on this earth that you can do except John 6:44. If you feel God is drawing you. That is it. You are being drawn. That's the end of it. He started it. He will finish it. All you can do is go along for the ride because he is in the business of saving. That's why he did what he did. I don't know if you've ever seen an account of what Jesus went through on that cross, but man, it it, it brings a tear to my eye to see what he did on that cross. Uh, Amazing. And he paid in full. And if you think that there's, you have some kind of power that once you are saved, that you can lose it. And again, I'm speaking to the saints. If you think that there's anything you've done that you can cause it to be lost, the answer is no. The question is, were you ever saved? It is a rough question to ask. But there is no one that is actually saved that will ever become unsaved. So don't hit that rock twice or you'll find yourself in the tribulation jesus saved you that's it not because you did anything not because you're so great it's because he's so great and it's because of everything he did and when we get to heaven we're going to be nothing but grateful because we don't deserve to be there any more than barabbas deserved to be replaced by jesus all right let me get on to the pictures real quick i want to show you something i found which i thought was pretty cool now we have coming in a eclipse an eclipse coming in it's a very special one as a matter of fact they don't they do not occur very often it's very small i think they said if i was watching steve fletcher i believe he said it only happens 3.1 percent of the time out of 100 eclipses only three will turn into this special eclipse now, you know, last year, I spent the entire year going over all of the timelines. I did not, I decided this year not to look at the other timelines because I felt, and still do, 
feel that the last day of the year is March the 16th. And the first day of the year will always be March 17th. The reason I believe this is because this is the day of equal parts. Anybody can go look it up in time and date. This on March 16th is the day where the exact 12 hours in a day and 12 hours at night. This gives us, and then again, I didn't know this. When I first started this timeline, I did not know this. Then I find the passage in the Bible is that Jesus says, are there not 12 hours in the day? And I thought, hmm. Let's put Lazarus in there and see if it all works out. And it fits like a glove. And I find that Mary has to perform a ceremony on the third day. Jesus resurrects Lazarus on the fourth day. For th uh, another four days later, Mary and Martha are clean. And then a day after that, they have a meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And I'm thinking, wow. How perfectly does that fit? You can't make that fit if you wanted to, but there it is. It fits. The Bible records that six days after this meal, Jesus went to the cross. The Bible records that four days before he goes to the cross, that he rode into town called the Triumphal Entry on a donkey and a colt. That would leave two days after this meal for the triumphal entry, and it fits six days, just like it shows. It fits perfectly. Jesus has a supper, and so many arguments over the years I've heard, and we figured it out. Sun goes down at nightfall. It becomes the next day. Jesus has the last supper that night being the next day. On my timeline, you'll see it. You'll notice here as... Um, Oh, I'm going to, uh, don't get mad at me. The Ecru Symphony makes the timeline, and so does um, studies, uh, endtimestudies.com, end time endtimes-studies.com. She also does, I believe that's this time, yeah, this is this timeline because you can go to the website and find this, but you'll notice there for the Equilux, April 3rd, where Jesus rises, she has an asterisk next to the number two. It's because it has already become the next day at nightfall. So it was the second where Jesus rose, but it became nightfall. He rose sometime that night. We don't know when, 9 p.m., midnight, or 3 a.m. I don't know when, but it's Bible records that he rose, and, and they had gone to the tomb before the sun rose. So that being said, I want you to notice this. My second favorite timeline is the first sliver of the moon with the sun in Aries. And look down there at the bottom. Um, April 21st, one day after the head of their year. What would the day before be? If that was the head of the year, the day before would have to be the Sabbath. And that would be April the 20th. That's when this eclipse is happening. So I thought that was really cool. And you come down here. And it's not on this one. I'll get to that in a moment. Okay, this again, 420. We see this event happening uh, up in Solarium. That's a different app. Imagine these stones. I talked to you about this last time. Imagine these stones. You have to jump from stone to stone to get to the other side. Only the river is raging. It's a raging river. You can barely hear anything. But it's a raging river. And it's foggy. You cannot see the other side. And the other side is much further away than this. That is us as we go through this. And, and, and as we get to each date, new revelation is presented to us. And then we bring it to you. But this is us. We are crossing. Very few will attempt this cross. But they, we will. We'll, we'll go across. Then Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly in front of the rock. This is Numbers 20 in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen now, you rebels. Must we bring you water out of this rock? Question. Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice. Why did Moses not go into the promised land? That's why, right there. Stop hitting the rock twice. You're saved. It's over with. Stop thinking you have a the ability to lose it. You don't. question is, were you ever saved? Have you ever actually struck the rock? Is the question. 
Listen now, let's see, Moses raised his hand, struck the rock twice, so that a great amount of water gushed out. And remember that during the tribulation, there will be a great multitude that no man can count. So they are going to receive a double portion. They will go through the tribulation, but they will receive a double portion. There will be such a huge number that no man can count showing up at seal six. And these are them. Moses is showing us a picture. God is showing us a picture using Moses as to who or, or what happens at this moment. And this is the moment where the raptures occurred and Moses cannot, well, yeah, they go into the promised land, but Moses cannot because he struck the rock twice. And the congregation and the livestock were able to drink. He did, he thought he was doing something, but he didn't trust God. All he had to do was struck, strike that rock one time, accept salvation one time, and he would have crossed over into the promised land, but that's not what happened. But the Lord said it to Moses and Aaron, Because thou didst not trust me to show my holiness in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this assembly into the land that I gave, that I have given them. So you see, it is a bad idea to think that you've lost your salvation. That is a bad idea. All right, I wanted to point this out real quick again, as I did last time the video. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds on watch when he returns. We're already on watch, are we not? Are we not watching right now? Are we not trying to figure this out right now? There are not very many of us in the world right now. There will be a great multitude that no man can count. Watchers like we have never seen, they will be digging and tearing the Bible apart, trying to understand what's going on. A great multitude will show up at seal six. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve and will have them recline at the table. Well, it's going to be a real relaxed environment here at this table. And we're going to be served by Jesus at this table. And he himself will come and wait on them. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not only did he um, just pour out every drop of blood to save us, he is going to serve us. He is going to come to you and you and you and ask you how you want whatever it is you want cooked. And before you know it, that plate will show up in front of you. It will not get cold. It will not get rotten. It will not taste bad after you don't eat it in 50. You can take your time as you eat. Now, that's over with. He will come. You will be reclined at a table and he will come and wait on you. Then he goes on to say, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night, and finds them alert, those servants will be blessed. But understand this, and he's telling the second and third watch. He's not talking to the bride right now. Everybody confuses this. He's not talking to the bride. He is talking to the second and third watch. The bride's already in heaven. We are already lazily reclined at a table, and Jesus is already serving us. We're there. That's it. We're there. 38 is talking to a different group of people. Even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night and finds them alert, those servants will be blessed. This is a good argument for three raptures right here. Now, he wants to make a point, but understand this. If, we'll call it sane, uh, homeowner, but let's call it saints and Jews, if the saints and Jews had known at what hour, if he, they had just known what hour we were stolen away, if the saint, if saints and, and, and uh, Jews had known what hour the thief was coming, Jesus stole us away, he would not have let his house be broken into. If they had known, they would have done more against us, but they don't know, they don't believe, they don't see what we see. 
They have no clue that this event's about to take place. They laugh and mock and scoff us. They'll tell us to stop watching. They'll point out a verse here and there that says, uh, only God knows. Yeah, well, he's talking about the end of the, the millennium. When you read Matthew 24, 35, he's talking about the end of the millennium. He is not talking about the rapture. Why anybody would associate that with the rapture of the bride, I do not know. You must be ready because the Son of Man will come in an hour. You do not expect. He is talking to the homeowner, the saints of the tribulation and the Jew. The, the uh, bride is already in heaven reclined at a table. I can't even, I can't even fathom this. This is, this is going to be wild. I'm going to be like, stand up, Jesus, you sit down because I want to serve you. And he's like, no, it has to be this way. Okay, you know, all right. Now, go, now this is, you'll find this in Luke. Remember, Luke knows the order of all things. I want you to go to Mark and see if you find anything about a table reclining or being served by Jesus himself. No, you won't. No one knows the day or the hour. Boom. He is talking right here. The bride's gone. In Luke, the bride's already gone. He is talking directly to the saint, and he's talking to the Jew. Now let's go check out Ma uh, Matthew. What was that? Mark, yeah. Let's go check out Matthew. Is there anything in here about a table, about reclining, about uh, being served by Jesus? No, nothing. And third rapture. No one knows the day or the hour. These are the verses that people will point out to tell the bride, stop watching. We will never stop watching. We are not this group. This is us. We're gone. Be dressed, which means be that skin that, that uh, Jacob put on, the covering of Jesus. Be dressed, which we are, and ready for service. And keep your lamps burning. He's not talking about the ten virgins here. Then you will be like the servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet. I guess at that point he would be talking to the saints. But then we have in 37, blessed are those servants whom the master finds on watch when he returns. Boom. That's us. And we will be reclining, not just sitting at a table, reclining. I guess, I don't know. I, I spill food on myself if I try to eat reclined. Maybe food doesn't spill like that. I, I don't know. It's gonna it's gonna be interesting. I certainly don't want to get food on my white robe. But then again, it'll be like the Jews when they were wandering in their wilderness and uh, their clothes stayed new for forty years. They never got soiled or needed to be washed or anything. They just stayed clean. Shoes never wore out. Forty years of wearing the same pair of shoes never wore out. Hmm. March 17th to April 20th is 35 days. According to the Enoch timeline, the head of the year is March the 17th. 35 days later is April the 20th. If you count on the Enoch timeline, Nissan has 30 days. Ayar uh, uh, would have five days in it. That would be 35 days. IR5 is the date the nation of Israel uh, ooh, became a nation. All right, so I pinned it in here today and took a brand new picture. But I'm lost. Let me see where I'm at. Okay. 35 days after... The head of the year of March 17th is Ayar 5. In 1948, on May 14th, Ayar 5 was May 14th. Ayar 5 and May 14th were the same. Because they uh, observed the moon, it almost appears as though God is going to use multiple calendars here. April the 20th is also the Sabbath on the first sliver of the moon um, well, it, it uh, when the moon is in Aries, the first sliver of the moon after the, the, the sun is in Aries is April the 21st, so the day previous would be April the 20th on that timeline. 
it is IR5 this year. Now, if you Google it, it's going to show you that it's April the 26th, but we're using the Enoch timeline down here, and Nissan is the first month, IR is the second month. You have 30 days in Nissan, five days in IR, starting the year on March 17th, the day of equal parts, you will land exactly 35 days later on a YAR-5. So, I thought that was compelling enough to bring it to you. This solar eclipse is mounting up to be quite a big deal. I see many, um, many, many uh, YouTubers finding this. So, I'm sitting down looking at the timeline, doing math, and going, I couldn't believe it. I says, wait a second. That's 35 days after. That's IR5. That's the same date Israel became a nation in 1948. That's uh, another awesome thing that points towards, uh, is it going to happen? I don't know. It's a stepping stone. It's foggy. The water's raging. I can't see the other side. Is my next step going to land me on the other side? I don't know. But that's what we're watching. I wanted to keep the video short. I probably went over, but uh, we already did go to acquire like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, if you have anything like, I'm not saying everything's not awesome because a lot of people have some really good stuff. Um, a lot of stuff is uh, in, in incredible finds, uh, and, and I like it when they come into the Discord, come to my room, and uh, put it in there so I can look through it. And it's a lot of times, a lot of time to answer. But it, it, trust me, I'm seeing it all. I'm reading it all. I read so much, actually, that I don't have a lot of time. A lot of times I, you know, hit the like button or the heart. Was that the heart on, on there? It, it means I read it. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the, all the comments and, and stuff. So um, could we be going home on the first or the fourth watch? on April the uh, April the 20th during this eclipse it's uh it's an extremely high watch day I can tell you that that next stone we jump to will it be the will it be heaven will it be the shore of the other side can't see it's too foggy but that's how it was designed it was designed that way because if it wasn't Lucifer would have never allowed Satan uh Satan would have never allowed Jesus to be crucified it would have never allowed it if he even understood. Satan is a lot like <clears throat> Satan's done his job because he convinced a whole group of people that God doesn't even exist, that the Bible's stupid and written by man. He did a good job. Then he's convinced a whole bunch of other people, yeah, God exists. And if you'll do this, this, and this, you're going to heaven. You're in. He did a really good job, but God's smarter. By a lot. And he's going to draw and call and put stumbling blocks. Why do bad things happen to good people? That's why. That's it right there. Why did I go through this most bizarre surgery that only happens to a very small percent? And most of the people that it happens to die. Why? It slowed me way down. It slowed me way down to get back into my timelines and start researching this. And I'll tell you what, I've never found. What I am finding now, the we're running to and fro for sure, and the knowledge has increased exponentially. I, I, I didn't know any of this stuff. I didn't know, even know where to apply it. I always knew if I don't know the first day of the year, I can't do any of this. So, Repo Man 64, I think I did everything. If I find anything else, and if we go past the 20th, we're just going to keep watching. Uh, for me, second Passover is April the 29th, April the 30th. Remember that nightfall thing that happens. Um, so April the 29th, April the 30th is an extremely high watch date for me. And so we'll just uh, we'll keep on watching. But I don't know. Lots of stuff's brewing out there. A lot of things are happening. And I didn't cough one time on this video. I really need to. So I'm going to get off. We'll chat with you later.